What's up, everybody? Isaac Mihongos here with IsaacMihongos.com, and like I said, I was going to teach you how to use both Photoshop and Lightroom and give away all my tips and tricks to make your images awesome. Now, what I want to do here is turn this image into this image right here, and that is called Turning the Tides. It's probably one of my best images in my personal opinion, and um, it was, you know, sunrise, as you can tell. It was. It comes from the east, and it sets in the west, and uh, this was taken down uh, Highway 1 next to Bixby Bridge. If you live in California and have gone there, I highly suggest you go there because it's an amazing place, and I didn't even dent anything by going here. And um, what I usually do when I start off with my images um, is remove chromatic aberration, and that is a personal preference of mine. I always turn this on. And when it comes down to profile correction, oh, let's let's just first see what lens I'm using. I am using the Canon 2870 f2.8, the grandfather to the Canon 2470 f2.8 version 2 that recently came out. Now this lens is sharp. Um, for being the grandfather, being uh, discontinued back in 2002, this lens is still sharp. Uh, I'm not saying that it's fast, but it's still sharp. And I am shooting at ISO 100 at f-stop 5 at 400 of a second. Um, I always shoot in raw no matter what and it is underexposed and the reason I do that is because it's a lot easier to recover shadows in de uh, shadow detail than it is to recover highlight information and uh, if you go further into oh let's turn this off and um, it's just a lot easier to recover that now I decided not to turn on profile correction that is because I would rather have a natural vignetting than to put it in post and that's my personal preference and that is because it's a lot easier to um, it's a lot easier just to have it naturally there. Now I bumped up my warmth level to 833, 36, 8336. And from there I went down to tint. Now I'm not a huge fan of tint. I never go past uh, 10. So I decided to leave it at 7. And that is because I thought it was the right balance between um, the temperature and the tint. Um, and then I followed up with the exposure and let me show you right here you can tell that it was so much easier to bring up all those shadows and all that detail and I stuck down and went to 1.87 for the exposure because most of the time you're not gonna I feel like you're not really gonna get um, in a, a solid whole number like 185 190 um, most of the time it's between um, like a 5 or a 10 or 10 and 15 so um, going down further down the line of the basic panel i don't usually touch contrast i usually go exposure highlights shadows whites black i skip clarity and then i go into vibrance and saturation and that is because i don't want my images to look too plasticky and that is because um if i start making it too plasticky then i feel like i miss too many details and let's bring back those highlights starting off with that so i brought down those highlights uh the sky wasn't really there there weren't any amazing clouds but the sunlight right here is what i wanted to bring up and you can tell with those highlights i actually brought it brought back this amazing you know light that was coming in and this lens flare right here and let's let's look at the shadows just play pay close attention it's so easy to bring back that detail especially if you are shooting in raw now what i decided to do here is bring up my shadows to about uh, 50% and that is because um, I didn't want to overkill it I was going for uh, sort of a surreal um, type of image right here and what I did following that is that I brought down all of the whites because um, uh, I, I want people to focus on this and you, you'll you see why and that is because I will bring up the blacks right here and I brought it up to about 79 and that is because um, I'll eventually bump up the clarity like like in a bit but not right now so I went down to saturation and I desaturated this and why am I doing this it is because later on I can be a lot more accurate within the hue and saturation level now this is a lot to take in and but but this is my process this is how uh, I work and I've, I've learned for myself on how to do this and uh, later I bumped up the clarity now although the 2070 is very sharp um, it's definitely not as sharp as the new 20 2470 or a Sigma, which I wish I used. I was being a dingus, and I decided not to use it. So uh, later, I bumped up the contrast, and it's it it just it just changes a lot. So I brought this up to 60, uh, 59, same thing. Um, I brought it down. I brought it up, and uh, I usually don't. 
I used to pay a lot of attention to the histogram, but now I personally don't. And let's load up the curves. Now the curves for me are probably the most versatile um, uh, adjustment that I use, and I find it with a lot of people um, that the tone is prob the tone curves is where they get most of their edit because it makes the major difference. Now I'm gonna load up my personal Big Sur um tone curves and you can tell the drastic change well not so drastic but um you can you you'll see the difference between let's zoom in and uh, you can tell it goes from not so sharp to very sharp with the both the corrections and this let's turn this off and then back on yeah you can tell it takes away that fade um which i'm not a personal fan of i think it's overdone with uh with some fades out there especially if you're using visco cam now, with the tones, I usually set up one marker here at the very bottom, like right here, and uh, one in the middle, and then one right here. Uh, let me just restart that. Let's make it linear again. So I, I do this, this, and then this. This one's for the exposures, this is for the highlights, and this is for the shadows, I believe. Correct me if I'm wrong, but that's how I set it up, and I usually just fiddle around with that. Usually, most people make an, an S curve. It's called the S curves. It's in the tone curves. Um, but I find myself doing that a lot less and less. And that is because I learned that trick from a good friend of mine. Shout out to France from France. But um, that's that's what I did. And now this is where I rarely move around hue and saturations. And that is because I mostly use the selective color tool within Photoshop. However, I found that, that um, this was actually pretty pinpoint accurate when I did this so it usually fluctuates between the oranges and the yellows and like you can you can tell so what i did is i brought down the yellows down to 81 81 and then i brought down the greens which is really weird why am i bringing down the greens uh that is, that's because i'm trying to save this detail right here because those plants did not look um salmon color so I brought it down to a green of 49 and insert 49. You can't see the change a lot right now, but that is because I'm going down to hue and saturation. So, or saturation just in general. So I'm going to bring up the oranges and that is because I'm still trying to recover the information in here. So after that, I decided to go with 35 within the yellows. And that is because I'm really trying to make that sunrise pop. And uh, it actually did look like this. It was insane. Uh, I'm going to bring down the greens just so you can get a little bit more. Again, I'm trying to aim for surrealism. Um, at times, I don't want to overdo it. But in this case, you know, YOLO. So I went down to 49 because I don't want it, uh, I don't want it to be too distracting. Um, but that, this is how it actually looked. So then follow <coughs> Following it up with the blues, I decided to go and bump up the blue just slightly to bring to make that water pop. But again, um, I'm trying to make sure that people t pay attention to this. Um, bring it down this way, like right, like right there. And uh, following that up, I don't use luminosity too much within this image, and that is because I thought that with the sunrise, the lighting was perfect. The the this the if this wasn't here, um, maybe I would use it, but the the colors are already great so i didn't touch luminosity too much and like and like i said um i am not too good with split toning a lot of people use it but i i i freaking suck at it so i skip that a lot of the time i know it's horrible i should probably learn it but uh i am her i'm just terrible <laughs> with it um i'm probably gonna learn eventually but uh, like I said, the sharpness within the the 2870 is great. It might be a pretty old lens, but they do retain their value for a reason. And uh, it's already tack sharp. <laughs> so I'm going to skip the detail. And we already did lens correction and then following that up, the effects. Now, I love vignetting. I think it really it makes like a tunnel vision. So you, you, you want the viewer to see what you view. So that, that's what I personally use. Um, post crop vignetting like i said sometimes i'd like the natural but it, the natural vignetting that comes with the lens but sometimes it's not enough so, so you can see right here uh, it went from like it was like really bright 
and then the edges got really dark and I am trying to narrow people down to this right here. And then following that up, one of my favorite tools that was brought recently into uh, Lightroom CC was the dehazing tool and it's an extremely powerful tool. Um, I tried to dehaze in Photoshop uh, one time and it was just like a tr giant train wreck. So this is an extremely powerful tool. So I went down and decided to make it about 17 and that's because I think 20 was too much and um, 20 was too much. <laughs> Let's just go with that. <laughs> and um, so something that I didn't really think I was going to do was use the camera collaboration and that is because I never use it. However, like I said, you have to mix around a lot within uh, Lightroom and within your edits to, to show people what you saw. So what I did is I bumped up to 25 and you can see that the, the drastic change, oh, well, it's not too drastic, but once you bump, bump up that saturation, you can really tell, look, look at that. Oh, that looks, that looks desaturated. And if that's your style, that's great, but that's not mine. I saw something warm that day. So I'm going to bump this up to 50. That's a good medium. Most of the time I find myself not even pushing, um, like hue and saturation or luminosity or, um, hue and saturation and luminosity past like 50. And that's because I find that it's overdone eventually. And then with the greens, I decided to bring them back slightly. And I went down to a 10, down to a 10. And with the saturation, I went down to 40. Now, wh wh what I want to say here is that when I usually do this, I don't find myself, have. I, I, there's no like specific way. So I could have done this, but that doesn't look, that looks like, that looks nasty. That looks, ooh, look, like, look at that. Like. It, it just looks nasty. So I decided to bring this down to 40. Yeah, let's bring that down. And sweet. And with the water. So I really wanted to make pop, like I said, and uh, the hue and saturation weren't doing too much of a job when I was first editing it. So I brought down the saturation, the blue primary was in the camera collaboration down to 30 and then the saturation down to 40. And let's give it a second and you can tell that it's the water isn't as distracting as a sunrise and what i wanted to do here was just make sure that people people's eyes started at the sunrise and then uh it was beaming down towards this and that that is my aim and um let's just compare and contrast between these two images let's look at that if it loaded ooh, you can tell that it has a this one's a lot warmer definitely so what we're gonna do is we're going to bring up a little bit more shadows right about there right about there and we're going to bring this down just a bit and oh we'll just bring up those shadows a little bit more and as you can see here we have about the same results about the same results so um that is my way of editing this image again always underexposed when it comes to these things it's a lot easier to save the shadows than it is to save the highlights and um that's all i got uh originally this this took me like 16 minutes uh when i was first recording the first like three this, this is like six try so hopefully um i know this was a little bit fast there wasn't too much detail but it, i, I don't want to bore people so um i can either go with really fast and uh not too very into death and just get to the final thing or I can be like specific and it's probably gonna take me like 10 12 minutes um, but it's, it's the difference between those two and uh, that's that's all I got you know this is one of my best images and uh, let me know if you want the preset um, and that's all I got my name is Asmi Hongos signing off asmihongos.com see you